Schultz, and I am the chair of the City of Albuquerque Board of Ethics and Campaign Practices. I want to call our meeting today to order. Uh, we are doing this entirely by Zoom. We appreciate everybody's cooperation. We have an awful lot of people who are currently signed in. I would like to ask that all individuals, if you are not a member of the board, please make sure that you are on mute. And when the appropriate time comes, you will be called on and you will be able to speak. Uh, just from doing a quick look around the screen, it looks like most looks like most people have been very cooperative in that regard, and I appreciate it. We don't have a very large agenda today, but let me start off. Uh, our first item of business will be to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Those minutes already have been circulated to the board members. Do I have a motion from one of the board members to approve the minutes from our last meeting? So moved. And if you could identify yourself when you speak, that would be great. So um, this is Mike, Michael Cadigan. I move to approve the minutes. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, this is James Green. Um, I make a motion to, uh, um, I confirm that motion. Okay, we'll, we'll, we will that count motion. that as the second. Yeah. Is there any discussion? For all, all those members of the board who are in favor, I, Miriam, you said we have to do all of this by a roll call. We're gonna be doing roll call votes just because we're remote. And I do think that Jason just joined us as well. So I think we can get through everybody. Um, so I'm just going to um, call everybody. We're going to do this a few times today, I'm sure. So Member Breen? Um, I. Member Cadigan? Yes. yes. Member Cadigan? Yes. Member Marks? I'm sorry, what are we voting on? Just the we're, approval of the minutes. We're approving the minutes. Uh, I vote aye. Uh, Member Martinez? Yes. Member Selvin? Yes. And Chair Schultz? Yes. Thank you very much. The next item is to approve our agenda for today. That agenda has been timely and properly posted. Do I have a motion to approve our agenda? I move oh. approval. And is that uh, Mike Cadigan again? Sorry, yes, I'll, I'll move approval, Michael Cadigan. All right, and is there a second? Second, Susan Selvin. All right, thank you. Is there any discussion or about today's agenda? All right, seeing none, Miriam, if you can call the roll, please. Yes, Member Breen? Yes. Member Caffrey? Yes. Member Cadigan? Yes. Member Mark? Aye. Member Martinez? Yes. Member Selvin? Yes. And Chair Schultz? Yes. All right, now that that's out of the way, we have two items on today's agenda. One is a mandatory meeting that we are required to hold, and the other will be consideration of an advisory opinion. Given that the overwhelming majority of all of you who have tuned in are here for the mandatory meeting, we will do that first so that none of you are forced to remain longer than we need to. Let me just make a few comments about this portion of the meeting, and then I will be turning this over to the board's auditor. Under section 4J of the board's rules and regulations, we are required to have a mandatory meeting concerning campaign financial records. This meeting is required to be held between the Friday immediately preceding the election and the day of the election. And at this meeting, the board is required to inspect or audit the campaign financial records of each candidate and each measure finance committee. The board retains an auditor to perform this function on behalf of the board. And as designated by the board, the auditor is entitled to ask each candidate or candidate's treasurer or the chairperson or treasurer of each measure finance committee 
for clarification or additional documentation related to all campaign financial disclosure statements or other documentation. So at this point, I want to turn the meeting over to Thad Porch. He is the auditor retained to represent the board and perform this function. And Mr. Porch will be conducting the remainder of the portion of this meeting. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. My name is Thad Porch. I'm the independent auditor uh, for finance. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank you all for your voluntary compliance with this mandatory meeting. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair and members of the Ethics Committee, I have reviewed the campaign reports and data provided uh, by members, uh, by candidates, and by the committees. I sampled expenditures, revenues, bank statements, and so forth, and have found the following entities to be in compliance. I will read their names. When I read your name, uh, you are allowed to drop off this phone call. There are only a few of you I will have a little more time to, uh, need a little more time to speak with. So here are the people who have passed the compliance uh, portion of this. Cynthia Borrego, Dan Lewis, Clarissa Pena, Lance, Lance Senna, Luis Sanchez. And sorry, Ren Mr. Porch, could you just read a little slower? I'm sorry, just for our note purposes. I'm sorry, I'll start from the beginning and I'll go slower. Cynthia Borrego, Dan Lewis, Clarissa Pena, Lan Senna, and please forgive me if I mispronounce any names, uh, Luis Sanchez, Renee Grout, Rob Griley, Tammy Feeblecorn, Tim Keller, Travis Kellerman, Byron Padrell, uh, Emily Marie DeAngelis, Lori Lee Robertson, Manuel Gonzalez, Moro Montoya. Hold on, let me move further down on my list. Albuquerque Sierra Club, Albuquerque Fire Pack, Albuquerque Workers First, Albuquerque Ahead. Albu uh, American Civil Liberties Union, New Mexico Votes, Build Back Berkey, Everytown Victory Fund, Help Albuquerque, which is Healthy Economies Lead to Progress, New Mexico United for All, No Corporate Council MFC, Planned Parenthood Votes Albuquerque, Retired Law Enforcement for a Better Albuquerque, and save our city. Uh, those entities have passed compliance and are no longer required on this phone call. So, excuse me one second. So just to be clear, if your name, your candidate, or your measure finance committee was named by FAD, you are excused, you're welcome to stay on, but you are not required for any further portion of today's meeting. Um, um, it would be helpful if you did drop off just because it is such a cluttered meeting right now. This meeting is being streamed on GovTV and you can watch the rest of it there. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Chair, if if I could just add that um, the Gonzalez campaign does have one other pending item on the agenda. So even though they are uh, excused from this portion, they may want to stay on for the rest of the meeting. Okay. The following entities... Uh, I'm still requiring more data for, and they will be required at another meeting in the future to uh, go through the same process. Those people are Andreas Patrick Valdez. Uh, we have been in communication and he's just missing his bank statement, but I've received everything else. Eddie Aragon, uh, we will talk again in a minute about that one. We're missing uh, quite a bit of data there. And Patrick Ben. Sias, I have not received anything. So uh, Andreas and Patrick, if you're on the meeting, you can get off. However, I will be needing your data. Uh, the following two entities will be getting a finding letter uh, related to compliance, but not needing any further discussion here today. 
That's the Philip Ramirez campaign. It's regarding only allowing a bank account with a debit card and they have a credit card. And then Indivisible Albuquerque, which is using the bank account for Indivisible Knob Hill instead of opening their own bank account. You'll also be getting a compliance letter, a findings letter. Uh, outs, uh, so if you're on those two, you know the letter is coming and you can get off the meeting here today. The last one I have is Eddie Aragon. And uh, is the representative for Eddie Aragon on the call? Hi, Mr. Aragon, how are you? Uh, I am well, I'm here also. My treasurer is also here, Kim Pierce. So oh, I think just, uh, you know, I haven't seen Kim. Tell us what you need. We have everything that uh, you're requiring. Um, so we have it either here or after the meeting. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, it would be in regard to the emails I've sent for the missing data. Uh, I would encourage both of you to look at that email and submit the remainder of the data. Outside of the data needed to complete the compliance audit, I have not received a response to the findings letter number seven or findings letter number eight. In those letters, there are campaign finance materials that you have not submitted support for. And in campaign finance uh, letter number seven, there was a transaction, uh, I can't remember, it was twenty to $25,000 to Fox. And I needed a description uh, that, that of that. To RG Mountaintop. I'm happy yes. to discuss these details with you here. And this is a public forum and we're happy to have full disclosure here of uh, that. So what uh, that is for commercials that we bought on Fox News, Comcast, mm -hmm. which also went to Dish Network TV. Uh, that mm -hmm. was for a buy, I believe, roughly about the middle of the month. That went so old. let me stop you there. Go ahead. Uh, the requirement is when you have campaign materials, whether mm -hmm. when they are widely distri distributed, okay. that you upload a link to them or a copy of them to the campaign finance site. So your campaign finance report number seven and eight each received uh, findings letters for not doing that. I need you to do it and let me know when it's done. So please That's look at those letters and we'll save board time by not discussing it here. Is that clear? I will make sure that, yes, absolutely, it's clear. Uh, also, I think it's just a matter of making sure that Kim has the correct links or knows how to do that. Thank you. All right. That was the last of my compliance uh, items that I needed to discuss, Mr. Chair. So my portion is finished. And uh, Ethan, yes. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to suggest that we will put these on the agenda for November 5th, the follow-up with regard to Mr. Valdez, Mr. Aragon, and Mr. Seiss. If they have resolved these issues with the auditor before that meeting, um, they can be, we can uh, not move forward with that agenda item, but at this time I'd like to, uh, we will, my plan is to put these on the agenda for the 5th um, to the extent there is um, fines or anything that need to be discussed to the extent the candidates do not comply. And that's fine. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. City Clerk. Thank you very much. So Thad, is there anything else that we need from you today? No, sir. Uh, um, the procedures went fairly well. I will let the board know at the next meeting what uh, if, if we have people who are not complying, but uh, thus far, everyone has said they will. So there's no further information from me. Well, great. Again, thank you to the candidates and the Measured Finance Committee. And Thad, thank you very much for your time and your efforts on our behalf. You're welcome, sir. Take care. All right. All right, let me turn to the remaining item on today's agenda, which is consideration of a, of a request for an advisory opinion. Again, let me give just a little bit of background before we turn to our consideration. Under the city charter election code and specifically section or article 12, section three H. That portion of the city charter authorizes this board to issue advisory opinions. However, we are limited in the scope of what those advisory opinions can cover. And specifically according to the city charter, we are authorized to issue advisory opinions concerning the code of ethics, the election code, the open and ethical election code, and rules promulgated by either this board or the city clerk. In this board's rules, 
and particularly section 3A. This is a provision that was recently redone when the board redid its rules. That sets out the procedure for us to follow to consider advisory opinions. That procedure basically is as follows. A person is entitled to submit a written request for an advisory opinion. That request must be filed with the city clerk. The city clerk is then authorized to hire an outside independent legal consultant to review each request, prepare a draft advisory opinion, and submit that draft to the board. The board then can either accept or reject the draft advisory opinion, or it may revise the draft advisory opinion. The person requesting the advisory opinion is permitted to attend the board meeting when the draft advisory opinion is being considered. Importantly, each advisory opinion can be issued by the board only if a majority of the entire board votes in favor. So in, we have seven members, thus we require a vote of no less than four to issue an advisory opinion. With regard to what we are considering today, on September 15th, Carter Harrison submitted a request for an advisory opinion in writing to the city clerk on behalf of candidate uh, Gonzalez. The city clerk then retained an outside independent legal consultant to review that request. And they prepared a draft advisory opinion that was submitted to the board for comment by the city clerk's office. Several board members then responded to the city clerk with comments and proposed revisions. The draft advisory opinion was then redone and recirculated to the board. And it is that draft that currently is before the entire board for consideration today. Again, our job at this point is we can accept or reject the draft advisory opinion that presently is before the board, or we may make additional revisions and it will require the vote of four of us before the advisory committee opinion can be issued. So let me just stop right there and ask among the members of the board, are there any questions about the procedure either that has been followed up, up to this point or what our function is today? I'm seeing none. So we do have a draft advisory opinion that has been circulated. Let me ask if at this point, is there a motion from any member of the board about what to do with this ad draft advisory opinion and how the board should proceed? Mr. Chair, this is member Marks. Uh, I don't have a motion, but I do have uh, un unless it's re unless something is required to begin a discussion, and I do have some points of discussion on this. Uh, and that's fine. I certainly don't want to cut off any discussion at all. Let me ask whether there is a motion. Let me just get that on the floor first, and then we can discuss from there. I'll, this is Member Cadigan. I'll make a motion to approve the draft uh, advisory letter. Uh, for purpose of discussion. Okay, is there a second to that motion? I'll second that, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Member Martinez. Okay, thank you. All right, so there is a motion on the floor to approve the current draft of the advisory opinion. So, uh, 
let's go back to member Marks because I know you had comments. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, the, the restrictions of the Open Meeting Act, uh, you know, which we have endeavored to comply with, and I think we have, have made it hard for us to address this particular thing with uh, the, this advisory opinion uh, with having just one meeting. Uh, but my, my concern, and so a point of clarification, have uh, the members of the public, do they know the draft advisory opinion? Is it available to them? No, it is not. In fact, uh, no, it is not. It has not been posted because it uh, is not an official document yet. Okay. And, and so they won't necessarily know what we're talking about, but to, to apprise the, the candidate and, and uh, the, the draft advisory opinion, uh, I agree with the conclusion. The, the advisory opinion draft ends by saying this is not something that the uh, the board can issue an opinion upon. Um, and I agree with that, but I, I don't think the, the advisory opinion is it, it, just too, it's watered down. It's overly watered down. It doesn't explain uh, two key points that I think are pretty clear legally. Uh, and it, it just kind of says, well, well, and the points that I would make that I believe uh, are, are twofold. First of all, uh, the Gonzalez campaign has asked, uh, you know, if, if it's lawful to transfer $36,000 from the sheriff's campaign to a city election fund. And uh, I believe we, it is within our jurisdiction to and, and to issue an advisory opinion on whether that is compliant with the city code, the elections code. And my conclusion is that it is not, that the city election code uh, prohibits uh, transfers from a state campaign account and by implication, uh, transfer from a county account would seem to be uh, similarly prohibited and I also think it's prohibited because um, the Gonzalez campaign is not, and no campaign is allowed to accept a contribution of $36,000 from a person who is not the candidate and Mr. Gonzalez's sheriff campaign fund is not him. It's a separate legal entity. So if, you know, I would propose that we say the, the code prohibits what's been requested. And I think um, the Gonzalez campaign understands that the code prohibits what's been requested. And what they're really seeking is our advisory opinion on whether those provisions of the code are constitutional. And I think the draft advisory opinion sort of says, well, we can't opine on that, but it doesn't really clearly say why. And the reason why is because there is clear New Mexico law that an administrative body is not competent to uh, determine the constitutionality of a law or an ordinance. And uh, th those are cases that I've actually used in my legal practice. And there, there are several cases on that topic. And they say that, it, again, an administrative body cannot deem a duly enacted statute or ordinance to be unconstitutional that is reserved for the courts. And because of that, we cannot render an, the, an opinion on the matter that the Gonzalez campaign actually wants an opinion on. Are these restrictions? I think they understood, I think they would agree that the ordinances do prohibit what they wanna do. Um, they certainly, have a colorable argument that those ordinances are unconstitutional, but we are, we don't have the jurisdiction to decide that. And that needs to, and so I support the conclusion that the draft opinion gets to, which is that we're not gonna give it the, an advisory opinion, but I would have, uh, and I, I would still like to tell them the reason why, which is that, uh, 
uh, it appears that it is unlawful, and but we cannot answer the constitutional question because it's a constitutional question. So. Right, other comments from board members? Um, I, 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 uh, I guess professionally agree with, with what Mr. Mark said that, that the board does not have jurisdiction to decide constitutional questions. Um, it, if, if we can, I don't know if, if the, uh, requester's letter is somehow, can we make it part of the record so that it provides, so that there's a clearer link between what was asked and the opinion given, because I agree that if we just look at the opinion in isolation, it's a bit confusing and it's a bit incomplete. But if we have the requesting letter, it, it uh, has some more clarity to it. Well, in response to that question, yes, the letter is in writing and is submitted and on file with the city clerk which is precisely what is required under both the city charter and our rules. Okay. And, it, and quite truthfully, I think that's the reason why. Okay. It's just for the point you're making. Other comments from board members? Seeing none, I, I just wanna make one response. Um, I, I think we have answered what was asked of us. I am reluctant to answer our question, answer this question with too many legalities. Uh, we are an administrative body. And although a number of us have law degrees, not all of us do. And we are not sitting in a legal capacity. I think the thrust of the draft opinion, as it is written, is written in terms of our interpretation of what the city charter and our rules permit us to do. Um, and that is what the authorization that comes from the city charter states. So although uh, when I put on my lawyer hat, I don't disagree with any of the comments and observations that member marks made, I simply am reluctant to include too many of those legalities and legal authorities in a decision, an advisory opinion from what is a purely administrative board of the city of Albuquerque. So for that reason, I am more comfortable with the draft in its current posture than in including too many more legal authorities to support our conclusion. Um, do other members who have not yet had the chance to speak have any <coughs> comment on that or anything else they want to share? Mr. Aragon, I see your hand, but let me first ask the members of our board to speak first. So Susan, Michael, Josh, Jim, Member Cadigan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a, what is, I guess, a question. Given the um, timing of this hearing and the proximity to the election, I'm wondering if the candidate still wants an advisory opinion. Have, has, have they had the opportunity to say, never mind? Uh, that's an excellent question. I saw Mr. Harrison had logged in earlier, but I'm not sure if he's still on our call. His picture is there. Mr. Harrison? I am here. Uh, they're not letting me start my video, but uh, I am here. Okay, well, great. Um, <coughs> you, I assume you heard Member Cadigan's question? Uh, yes, and I, I think we would like a uh, uh, like an opinion, please. Okay. Thank you for that response. So, uh, Mr. Cadigan, do you have any other comments? 
Nothing else from me, thanks. Okay. Uh, Susan, Joshua? I don't have a legal background, so. Okay. Um, nor do I have a legal background, but I agree uh, with the comments uh, of Mr. Marks and uh, of you, Chairman. Well, are there any other comments? Because if not, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess technically we're not. It's not Mr. Chair. Our, but hold on one second, Mr. Ward. Uh, I, it's a, Mr. a procedural Mr. point. Mr. I, Aragon has also been asking to speak and he has not had the opportunity. I, so, I, I, I was just going to move that we accept public public comment. Oh, sure. And I don't, I appreciate that. I don't think we need a motion, but. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Aragon, if you have a comment where the board is willing to enter, hear that. And with regard to mixed, uh, Mr. Marks, and thank you for your comments, Marks, and uh, I appreciate the education that we're getting here, which will help further elections uh, in the future in terms of the determination of accounts moving uh, the lawful amount of 36,000 or any amount uh, to fund a personal campaign, which I think is gonna be uh, very helpful. I would like to know the second piece of that. And I'd also like, since uh, Mr. Harrison is on and or available, the second piece of what he requested, even though that there's not going to be uh, further uh, legal comments because you're an administrative uh, entity on that. So if just for the purposes, since this is being uh, displayed on GOV TV, uh, to go ahead and put that information out there. I think uh, given the close proximity of this to the election on Tuesday, I think it's a, a reasonable request if that's okay. Well, I have no problem responding to that. I have Mr. Harrison's letter. And again, this letter is on file and can be obtained through the city clerk's office. But the portion of the letter that I think gave uh, the board pause is in the second paragraph on the first page where Mr. Harrison asked, quote, I am particularly interested in whether our federal district court's decisions in People for Pierce versus Oliver uh, or New Mexicans for Bill Richardson versus Gonzalez either supersede any prohibition on such transfers that may exist in the election code or its regulations or council in the name of preserving constitutionality and interpretation of ambiguous provisions in such a way as to permit such transfers. It was the request specifically for us to pass on the effect of legal rulings and the constitutionality of provisions that uh, I think is what gave members of the board pause because that goes beyond what we are authorized to do under the city charter and our own rules. I think that uh, unclouds a lot of the ambiguity here and I appreciate you willing to read that out. Uh, for public discourse. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments from members of the board before I call the question? All right, seeing none. All those in favor of the motion, and the motion is for this board to approve the current draft advisory opinion. All those in favor, uh, well, actually, thank you, Miriam, I see that. Will the city clerk call for the roll call vote? Thank you. Member Breen? Yes, vote to accept the, the draft advisory opinion. Member Caffrey? Yes. Member Cadigan? Yes. Member Marks? No. Member Martinez? Yes. Member Selden? Yes. Chair Schultz? Yes. So the final vote is six in favor, one against. That passes the minimum threshold necessary, which is a majority of the board or four out of seven. So advisory opinion A01-2021 will be issued by the board. And uh, question for the city clerk, it's my understanding that the advisory opinion 
in addition to being um, provided to Mr. Harrison, who is the party requesting it, also will now be kept on file with the city clerk's office. Is that correct? That's correct. correct. All right. That concludes the only two action items we have on our agenda for this meeting. So is there a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. All right, thank you, I Mr. Marks. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Breen. I move that I second the motion. All right, will the city clerk do our roll call vote? All right, one more. Uh, Member Breen. Yes. Member Caffrey. Yes. Member Cadigan. Yes. Member Marks. Yes. Member Martinez. Yes. Member Selbin. Yes. And Chair Schultz. I am in favor. So we are adjourned. I thank all the members of the board. Mr. Harrison, I thank you for your continued participation throughout our meetings. And we are adjourned. <laughs>